In the Geospatial Analysis Basics lecture, we talked about creating land use scenarios by reclassification or using map algebra. In this presentation, we will introduce an experimental environment that allows to create scenarios in three dimensions using tangible interface. GIS is a very useful tool for spatial simulations. Geospatial simulations allow us to explore answers to decision and management questions. For example, what happens with water resources, ecosystems, if we change land use, if we um, experience sea level rise, if we have natural disasters such as flooding or fires. And to explore these situations uh, that didn't really happen, but we are trying to prepare for them, we need to create landscape scenarios. And to create new landscape configurations in two-dimensional space, we use map algebra, reclassification, or most often digitizing. However, if the change happens in three dimensions, that means that it's accompanied by change in topography, we need to create a three-dimensional change, which is a little bit more difficult to do, especially when using three uh, digitizing on two-dimensional screen. To facilitate communication of three-dimensional information using the easy-to-interpret three-dimensional solid models, Several new technologies were de developed over the past decade. One of them is relatively simple, GIS on 3D, where the geospatial data stored in geographic information system are projected over a solid model. So the digital model is static, but the data that are projected can change and are based on the data that are stored in GIS. A more sophisticated system allows to project not only different data, but also to use different digital elevation data and adjust the digital elevation model using the pins that are hidden under this sheet. So you can, for example, within minutes, change from the Earth's surface to Mars surface. However, this system is very expensive and uh, uh, the resolution is relatively low, uh, low for representation of topography and for practical applications. So although the system was developed in 2004, is it hasn't spread very widely because the cost is in hundreds of thousands of dollars. At MIT uh, Media Lab, they have developed a system where the three-dimensional model was used not only for communication of information, but essentially as a tangible interface for modification of landscape and communicating these modifications and analyzing these modifications within a geospatial analysis system. So here the model is created from a flexible clay such as plasticine. It can be modified by hand. The model is continuously scanned. Digital elevation model is created um, after each scan and the topographic parameters are computed. For example, slope, profiles, flow direction, and other parameters that may be needed, for example, for, for additional design. So here you can see uh, addition of buildings and computation of, of uh, aspect. And, and along with projecting the results of analysis on the three-dimensional model, they can be also projected on the screen and uh, uh, analyzed in perspective using traditional three-dimensional visualization. 
Here is an exa uh, another example of interaction uh, with this system where the user is modifying the model. While he is modifying the model, the, the profile is recomputed, the elevation and change in elevation is computed, also shading uh, and uh, uh, water flow direction, which is actually here projected onto the surface. And here you can see uh, how dynamically it works that while the hand is over the model, uh, the scanner actually scans the hand, adds it to the digital elevation model and computes the flow direction on the hand. Of course, the moment the hand is pulled away, everything happens just on the model. So that just uh, shows the real-time uh, real interaction with the uh, modeling tool. So we were fortunate that we were able to build a similar uh, system here at NC State at, at the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering using a 3D scanner, which is located here. Then uh, the scanner is coupled with a projector and we actually have two projectors so that we can uh, project different kinds of images. Uh, and that's linked to several workstations. And of course the core is the flexible model that is used as an interface. This is how the system works. So here we have the scanner and the scanner scans the, the three-dimensional model. So the information goes through the scanner into the GIS, the digital elevation model is computed and then the results of topographic analysis uh, are projected over the digital elevation model. And at the start, we can project also other uh, geospatial data over the three-dimensional model, such as uh, in this case, it's an orthophoto. And if it is hooked with additional projector, we can project additional data as well. And then how do we interact with this? So for example, we can project a water flow simulation, as in this case. And based on the results of water flow simulation, we decide that we want to put a check dam in this area to reduce the flow, uh, the flow that goes through this valley. Then the model is scanned and the simulation is rerun and you can see that water flow or water accumulates behind this check dam. So let's look at some concrete examples of simulations and landscape modifications using this system. Here is our experimental area uh, that is using the watershed data that we have already in our database and we have already used it, for example, for one of the visualization assignments. In this area, we observe some issues with sediment pollution. So here is the observed sediment transport. Here is the simulated sediment transport. And there are also issues with flooding. So for example, here is simulated water flow, which shows water flow accumulation in this area and then overflow over the road. And here is actual, uh, actual situation observed in the field. You can see that the, this um, water flow accumulation matches the simulation here. And the, this, is, uh, this is actually after uh, Hurricane Alberto came to the, to the triangle, so there was a very high intensity rainfall. So how can we simulate and explore different scenarios uh, using this real, uh, um, real world area? So we create a plasticine model uh, uh, for this area using the digital elevation model data. And here is the in initial terrain and water flow simulation using the scan of the flexible clay model. So let's say, so we simulate the situation that we had with Alberto, where we have water accumulated here and we have overflow over this road. So what happens if this road just weakens due to this overflow and it breaks down? How it will influence the flow here? 
So to simulate that, we simply push the, push the clay here, or we can just tear a little bit of clay out of the surface. The model is then rescanned and the simulation is rerun and we get the result. So you can see that this flooded area, all of that essentially drained. So we don't have water accumulated here, only a little bit in this area and everything just moves to this area. So now we want to reduce the amount of water that is coming through here so that we can repair the, uh, the road. So we try to put a check dam upslope from the broken road. Again, we put a put, uh, put piece of clay there. The digital elevation mo model is uh, created and the simulation is rerun and we get, this is the result. So the water is indeed accumulating here, but we are still getting quite a bit of water from these areas. So apparently this is not a very effective solution uh, and we can then explore further moving this check dam to, to lower area and exploring other solutions so that this road can be uh, repaired. And we can not only make these little changes with clay, but we can also add buildings. We can push in the, the ponds, we can add dams and we can modify roads. We can also change land cover properties. For example, the roughness of the surface. And then uh, for each of these changes, we can create a new digital elevation model and we can compute and project back on the model elevation or volume change. We can project the slope and aspect, view shed or line of sight. For example, how adding a new building would change line of sight. We can also simulate flow accumulation and look at how a change in topography or development uh, changes watershed boundaries. We can estimate soil erosion and deposition for new land use configuration. And we can also explore solar energy potential. So let's look at some additional examples. Here we are adding some buildings. So after the model is scanned, the new buildings will be here and we compute the elevation change and project it over the digital elevation model so we can quickly identify this change. And then we can also uh, assign to these areas different properties. So let's say here we can simulate runoff if all of this area is compacted soil or it is paved and the roofs are also um, also solid and produce a lot of runoff. So this will be the result. Then we can also explore how much the roofs just by themselves are contributing to this runoff. So you can see that that's not, not really the most of water that is coming here, that it's really coming from this big area. So it is very important to control this uh, for this area to have high infiltration rates, so well uh, vegetated and the soil that allows a lot of infiltration. And the, what is really nice about this tool is that several people can create the scenarios at the same time. So one person can add this building, another person can add this building, so they can collaborate on various scenarios. So each time somebody comes to, the, to our lab, I ask them to create some new scenarios. So you will see some examples here. So here one of my colleagues ha has tried to create a reckless scenario. So where he put the buildings all over, in all kinds of not very suitable places, such as here. So when we rerun the water flow simulation, you can see that the water is flowing around here, potentially if we run it also with erosion, causing lots of troubles here and uh, also lots of troubles for the stability of this building. And you can see there is a lot of flooding and a huge overflow over the road. 
then this was another group of people uh, that have that have designed a very orderly uh, orderly design with couple places that are designed to hold some water and they also increased the elevation of the road you can see here so the water doesn't get over uh, over the road anymore but it creates a pretty big lake in this area And then I had uh, another group of people coming in and they were really, really creative. Uh, so they have created, for example, this lagoon. Uh, and I wonder whether you can guess what they, uh, what they actually used for the lagoon. So they put a CD on, on, in this area and because it is shining, uh, the laser didn't get any response there. So we just filled with the... Uh, uh, selected elevation this hole that was created there creating a lag simulated lagoon then here uh, right below the building there is a parking lot that is that is porous that has lots of little depressions so it is designed to hold some water and we have some additional dams designed to hold water so this is how their water flow water distribution looked like and this is a water depth map, slightly different from what I had. And I had to run a really high intensity um, rainfall to get, uh, get water, a uh, lot of water into this area because uh, the lagoon and also this area was holding quite a bit of water as well as, this, uh, as these dams. But eventually, eventually with enough... Uh, enough rainfall uh, it was possible to get this area flooded again so you can see how persistent it is and how important for example the the infiltration is because once water starts flowing it's very very hard to control it so we can use the uh, laboratory 3d laser scanning for uh, as a tangible GIS as an experimental environment uh, for analyzing landscape, landscape change impacts and to design landscape change in such a way so that it minimizes the environmental impacts.